Hi, I'm Michael Despezio and welcome. In this unit on energy, we're going to focus this lesson on using energy resources. The fundamental question that lies at the foundation of this lesson is how does the use of energy resources affect the environment? Think about that as we go through the lesson. But first, let's see what you already know about energy and energy resources. I'd like you to take a look at these following statements and judge whether you think they are true or false. Okay, first one. People use energy resources to meet a variety of needs. Yeah, that's an easy one, and the answer is true. What about the next one? Fossil fuels are non-renewable resources. And the answer to this, and you might know, is also true. Later in this lesson, we'll look at the differences between renewable and non-renewable energy resources. Next statement. Wind turbines transform the motion of the wind into electricity. And that is true. Remember, energy can change from one form to another. And what a wind turbine does is it harnesses that lateral, that sideways movement of air, wind, and it transforms that movement of air using a turbine and a generator to generate or produce electricity. In the final statement, using energy resources can have a negative effect on the environment. And that, as you know, can be true. Okay, take a look at this picture right now. In your mind, or if you have a piece of paper and pencil, I'd like you to write down a caption for this picture that includes the concept of how burning fossil fuels may impact the environment. What do you see here? And how can you connect that to the burning of fossil fuels? Well, if I was going to caption this, I might say something about burning fossil fuels produces products that can be pollutants which enter the air. Some pollutants you can't see, they're invisible, but others you can. And here we have steam. We have water vapor that's condensing, and we're able to see the clouds of this. And you know, there might be some dirt in here as well that we can observe. So we're connecting the burning of a material, fossil fuels, to producing products which might negatively impact the environment. So what is energy? Energy, as you know, is the capacity to do work, to change something. And if we look at the types of energy that people use, well, what are they? Most of us use electricity all of the time. Light, we use light to see. Heat keeps us warm. Sound energy, obviously, we're listening to things. We have sound energy, which is impacting our lives. And there's also energy that is stored in the chemical bonds of fuels. So there are different types of energy that we certainly use. Now, what about energy resources? What are they? Well, energy resources offer a supply of energy that humans can use. And the primary source of energy for those of us on this planet is the nearby star called the sun. And when its radiant energy reaches the earth, that energy can be stored and or used in different ways. For example, plants harness the sun's radiant energy and store it in the chemical bonds of its biomass. Also, the sun's energy can produce heat, can make us feel warm, and it can also create wind, which then can create ocean currents. So you can see that the energy from the sun can impact us in many different ways. Now, what is a renewable energy resource? A renewable energy resource is an energy source that can be replaced or restored by nature 
in a reasonable amount of time, which means we can use renewable resources without running out of them. As we use them, more are made. Some examples of renewable energy resources are sunlight, the radiant energy from the sun, wind, trees, remember, if we cut them down, if we don't cut too many of them down, we can regrow them, and crops, we can always regrow these crops. So these are examples of renewable energy resources. So what is a non-renewable energy resource? Well, a non-renewable energy resource is an energy source that cannot be replaced or restored as fast as it's used. In other words, you can use it up. For an example, elements such as uranium, which is used as a fuel in nuclear power plants, are non-renewable resources because they can no longer be formed. They were formed long ago, and it took millions of years to produce these elements. So if we use them up, we don't have any more to go around. Other examples of non-renewable energy resources are fossil fuels. Ha! Huh, fossil fuels. What are fossil fuels? Well, fossil fuels are energy resources made from carbon-rich plant and animal remains. And they are non-renewable because they took millions of years to form. And if we use them up, we won't have any more left over. And fossil fuels include coal, natural gas, and petroleum. What is coal? Coal is a sedimentary rock that's formed from the remains of dead plants at the bottom of ancient swamps. And you can see a photograph of a couple of pieces of coal here. Now, coal mining, in order to get to the coal, you need to mine, which means you need to remove soil and rocks. And this can impact the local environment. And you can create deep mines. You can destroy landscapes and also pollute water supplies. So in obtaining coal, we can impact the environment in a negative way. Well, what about natural gas? What is natural gas? Well, some fossil fuels are gases that become trapped in rock formations. And natural gas is one of those materials. And it burns more cleanly than other fossil fuels. However, it does produce carbon dioxide, also water vapor upon burning and leaks of natural gas can be dangerous because natural gas can explode. What about petroleum? Petroleum means rock oil. It was formed from the remains of single-celled aquatic organisms that lived a long time ago. And this material, this debris from these dead organisms over time was changed into petroleum. Now, after we remove petroleum from the ground with oil drills, drilling down, getting the petroleum to the surface, the petroleum must be processed. And during this processing, it's separated into different types of fuels, such as gasoline, diesel, or jet fuel. How do fossil fuels impact the environment? Well, they can impact it in various ways. The burning of fossil fuels produces air pollutants, such as carbon dioxide, a greenhouse gas. Also, transporting petroleum can result in spills that pollute the environment and harm wildlife. And here we have some workers that are trying to repair the damage from an oil spill. And you can see that the oil has collected on the beach here and it has caused the death of some wildlife species. Acid rain. Burning fossil fuels produces sulfur dioxide and nitrogen oxides. And the acid rain forms when these gases combine with water in the air and then fall to earth as rain. Now, acid rain can harm aquatic plants. They can desolate the population 
that lives within lakes, and they can also damage land plants. Acid rain can also impact non-living things, such as structures made of metals, marble, or stone. And the acid can eat away at the surface of these materials. So what are alternative energy resources? An alternative energy resource is one that can be used in the place of fossil fuels. One of the ones which is very commonly used today is called solar energy. And solar energy is a renewable energy resource from the sun, and it can be converted into electrical energy. And remember, solar energy is free, and it's also clean. What about nuclear energy? I'm sure you've heard about it before. Well, nuclear energy, also called atomic energy, is released when the atom is split. In splitting uranium atoms, which is the fuel, which makes up the fuel that is formed in atomic power plants, nuclear power plants, releases much more energy than we obtain by burning the same amount of coal. However, although nuclear power plants do not produce carbon dioxide and other similar atmospheric pollutants, they produce harmful radioactive wastes that must be safely stored. So there are trade-offs. When we're using nuclear energy, we have more dangers that are associated with radiation and nuclear wastes. Now let's explore more about the alternative sources of energy. Hydroelectric energy is energy that is harnessed from moving water. Within a dam, mechanical devices, such as a turbine, which spins when water impacts its blades, and a generator, which spins, and in there we have coils of wire and energy is produced, electrical energy is produced. So these devices transform the water's energy of motion, the kinetic energy of water, into something we can use, into electricity. Now, hydroelectric energy can be traced back to the water cycle. Because remember that moving water that's in a river, well, where did it come from? It came from rain. We have evaporation, water vapor goes up into the sky, it collects, it condenses, and it falls as rain, and the rain runs downhill. And when that moving rain impacts the turbines of a hydroelectric plant, then we begin to generate electricity. However, the flooding of the land that produces the reservoirs, which are associated with dams, can destroy habitats, and dams can disrupt, disrupt the migratory paths of fish, and they can even lead to erosion. Wind energy, and you're probably familiar with wind energy, is a renewable resource that can spin turbine blades and energize the generators that are inside, up at the top of those towers. And what do you produce? That's right, electricity. So a wind turbine is another type of device that can transform the kinetic energy of movement, in this case, wind energy, into an energy form we can readily use, which is electrical energy. Now, wind energy is a renewable resource that doesn't produce air pollution. It might produce noise pollution if you're living by one. They could be pretty loud. But they can impact the environment in different ways. Sometimes they can interfere with birds that fly too close to the blades. But they also depend upon strong winds. And when winds are not blowing, you may not be able to depend upon wind turbines to produce electricity. Geothermal energy is another alternative energy resource, and this is extracted from the heat stored within the Earth. And you can harness geothermal energy in places that are near hot springs, geysers, or active volcanoes because these places are 
geologically active. And that activity is associated with underground heat, which can transfer to water, transform into steam, and the steam can then turn turbines, which will then transform kinetic energy into electricity. Biomass is another renewable energy resource, and this includes the living or recently dead organic material that can be used as fuel. Examples of biomass can be trees, crops, or decaying organic matter. When you burn biomass, remember you're producing the products of combustion including carbon dioxide and water vapor, and these can impact the health of the earth. Okay, there you have it, our lesson on using energy resources. In summary, let's take a look at what we learned. Energy resources may be renewable or non-renewable. Fossil fuels are non-renewable energy resources formed from the remains of living things. Obtaining, transporting, and burning fossil fuels may have many environmental consequences. Alternative energy resources have the potential to replace fossil fuels, but some may also have a negative impact on the environment. That brings us to the close of this lesson. And I'd like to thank all of you for participating. If you'd like to find out more about my interests in science and science education, please join me at my Twitter account, at mdespezio. And if you'd like to see more resources on science and science education, visit us at hashtag HMHScience. So thanks once again for joining, and I'll see you in my next lesson.